And now, for our feature presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Call in to join the conversation at 646-668-8393. Welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. It's the six-man Dean Geronimo in the studio with Mark Lee. And we welcome you to yet another exciting episode of our show. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. It's the six man Dean Geronimo, and as always, I'm in the studio with my right hand man, Mark Lee, from NJ to NC, as we do. So, Mark Lee, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Lovely outside during break time. I was sitting over there at my other job measurement, and I was just enjoying being outside because. You know, we've had some rain, we've had some other rough weather, but today has been a lovely day. I think temperature somewhere around the 70s or the 80s, so I was enjoying that fine weather outside for a little bit before coming on inside and doing this show, because we do like to inform people about what's going on in the world, but uh, could not resist enjoying some of that nice weather that was happening on the outside out there. So uh, that's what's been going on. We did create a new team for the Jambalaya Soul Sam on a last Saturday, so two days ago, and it's going to be a very interesting mixture of folks. Out of our team, we've got a um, somebody that works for the bank, so we've got a banker, we've got a teacher, we've got a dental hygienist, and we've got two students from North Carolina A&T, so they definitely came and brought their A-game, and they will make up the uh, team for uh, this coming year, coming up. Uh, there's been some changes in the Poetry Slam world. I don't know that they're going to have, as a matter of fact, I don't think they are going to have a Nationals this year, but they will have Southern Pride, which is the regional. They might have some other competitions that they do regularly. Like I think there's one where it's uh, individual poets and, of course, the women's poet competition. So there will be some poet competitions that they will be attending or have already attended. But uh, in terms of the Nationals, I think they've been going through some shakeups and things of that nature. So uh, that will not be happening. And then on Sunday, uh, you know, I had more than enough share of church services because Christ Central, the church that meets out of Haiti, uh, for Easter Sunday, they had not one, not two, but three services. And I have to do the uh, count of how many people are in the building during that day. So the last service was at about 1230, and they got done around 2. First one was around uh, 9, so let's say around 9, 1030, and 12 were the three services. But during that time, not counting people, because you know how we do theater counting, not counting people to get counted twice because they, or three times, because they were there for all three times, they still had approximately somewhere around 800 people walk through the doors of their uh, services and everything. And then Damien did a smaller service with his church, Holy uh, Tabernacle. But there was a whole lot of folks coming through there, regular members of their congregation as well as uh, friends and family. But uh, it was a steady flow of people steadily coming in there on a regular basis and uh on a sadder note we must uh you know give a shout out and our prayers and thoughts go out to those people that were victimized by the bombs in uh Sri Lanka you know that happened on Easter Sunday as well they said that more than 200 people were killed and more than and hundreds more wounded in nine bombings that rocked churches luxury hotels and other sites in Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday they said that's the deadliest violence the South Asian island country has uh, seen since a bloody civil war ended about a decade ago. So, uh, you know, the world has definitely uh, got some rough faces that are going on. I was actually talking to my friend Kaiki, who's a uh, Brazilian musician uh, trained in Brazil, from Brazil, and he was telling me that some of the politics there uh, are almost as bad as some of our politics here. So, uh, you know, we talk about that people that are in the, currently in office as well as uh, the different sides of the aisles, Democrats, Republicans, and things of that nature. But some of the mm-hmm. other countries, they've got some, they've got some drama as well. Because you're telling me that Brazil, apparently, they're trying to cut off the age that certain people can be in uh, office. Uh, so I think they might be trying to cut them off at like wow. 70 or something like that. And he said some other that things that were sense. going on in his government. And uh, but apparently, you know, it might make sense. But then there, there are some people that 
might be pocketing some money because it seems like there might be some people that are, uh, you know, in high positions. And that, I guess that happens with corrupt governments all over the world, whether it's the U.S., whether it's here or wherever. But, you know, some people might be pocketing more than their fair share. And uh, that might be why they have problems with some of their economy as well. And, you know, I've been playing uh, Words with Friends with the various competitors. One of the young ladies that I've been playing is from New Zealand. She's actually a crossword puzzle person. She does the crossword puzzles, I believe, for one of their daily newspapers. And I was teasing her. I was like, you're going to move to the U.S.? And she was like, not until y'all get y'all's aisles straight. And it took me for a minute to realize what she was talking about. But basically, you know, folks be watching us. And she was in other countries. And she was basically like saying that there's just too much bickering and doesn't seem to be enough uh, positive actions between the Democrats and the Republicans and just a lot of unnecessary bickering in the minds of some people from other parts of the world. Because she was like, not until y'all get y'all's act together. I mean, she's been here to visit. I think she's been to uh, the West Coast. Uh, I think she's even been to, like, New York and some of the East Coast uh, areas. But she's like, I am not moving there until y'all get y'all's act together. So, you know, we always talk about how we're the best thing you since sliced bread. But it's interesting to hear from other people's perspective as well. And when you get that other point of view, you can see your house isn't the way you you really thought it was. You know what I mean? Like, it's jacked up, man. We do a lot of things bass aquas, if you will. And we try to make it seem like everything is all right. And that's why so many people have this uh, perception that we are... The best thing since sliced bread But sometimes we don't even know Which type of bread we're eating You know what I mean Like <laughs> You got the Democrats And Republicans they say, They're saying the same thing A different way And it sounds different But then it's the same exact Policy procedure There's no way That all this stuff can be Passed as law or whatever And so many people are griping about it. You know, so what do we do in that situation? It starts with the voting. We should be voting some of these individuals out. But when you get comfortable, when you get comfortable with the same thing, you know, and then people, different parties, both parties say the same thing. Vote this line, vote that line. And within that line, there may be one or two individuals that are trying to do some positive Everybody else is doing the same Two step that they've been doing for years So you get the same thing <laughs> They say That's- left wing Right wing <laughs> Two wings are the same bird So What does that say That's real true And you know I was just checking out that they, uh, Speaking of people in this way that other countries are um, in Ukraine, they say the comedian whose only political experience consists of playing a president on TV appears like he's headed for a landslide victory in Ukraine's real life presidential election. So they're saying that this guy that uh, released after uh, exit polls re- results released after voting stations closed showed sitcom star Volodymyr Zelensky received an extraordinary 73.2 percent, or nearly three out of every four votes cast, compared to the current president Pedro. Paroshenko. So, uh, and he only got 25.3. So it looks like folks are tired of what's going on over there and they're ready to elect somebody that's uh, definitely a uh, new blood and things of that nature. It says it's borne out by election returns. The overwhelming victory by Selensky would stand as a crushing rebuke to, to Pershensky's five year in office and a verdict on the country's deep seated corruption, sickly economy, and five year war against Russian backed separatists in the country's east that has killed over 13,000 people. So it looks like, uh, you know, folks are getting tired of uh, government as is in a lot of places around the world, not just here in the U.S., and uh, they're ready to do things to uh, shake it up a little bit. Well, that, that's interesting, and hopefully we can do the same thing here. Um, we have found what happens when you vote... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me shut up But anybody that's out there You got what 19 people from the Democratic Party Right now That are running for president That's a lot of folks man And when you look at it and you say You know what Golly, Okay let's start weeding them all out Just start weeding them out And they'll start weeding themselves out By this time next year we'll have a, a race of, of 
individuals who hopefully it won't be something like it was with the Republican Party, where all of those individuals and out of all of those individuals, who got the nomination? That was amazing. In a ridiculous yeah, that was <laughs> that was know, amazing and, in a ridiculous way. Like he beat all of those people out, man. Nah, <laughs> you know, nah. somebody got paid off. It was a backroom deal somewhere because this guy is horrible, man. He's horrible, but he, you know he's I, he's absolutely it, horrible. <laughs> he, he's absolutely horrible. I did hear the doorbell ring, but before we get to the doorbell, I also want to make a comment on this that uh, President Donald Trump's lawyer, you know that lovely guy from New York, Rudy Giuliani, insisted Sunday that the president's 2016 campaign did nothing wrong by taking information from the Russians as House Democrats pledged stepped-up investigations into campaign misconduct and possible crimes of, of obstruction detailed in the special counsel's report. So, you know, he's been over there trying to say that he got off and everything on the Mueller report. But I've actually got a friend that's right. getting ready to do a whole primer on the Mueller report, and he's saying, if you read it, he did not actually get off. And there was a lot of things that were uh, indicated that were done wrong by various parties, people in his party. So, uh, you know, he's thinking that he's skating right now, and uh, he tried to spin it as a way that he's skating right now, but uh, he might not be out of hot water yet. Well, the one person that we needed to post the entire report without the redactions and everything just got himself locked up for uh, <laughs> posting pictures that shouldn't have been there. And if he hadn't gotten kicked out of that embassy, he wouldn't have been arrested right now. But you know what? It'll eventually come out. And everything will come to light. Like I said, what's done in the dark eventually comes to light. It is what it is. Right now, we just need to make it through to next November so we can get the special needs due out of 1600 Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. Absolutely. Like I said, I did hear the doorbell ring. That might be my good friend Dante, and he is a definite activist. So, uh, as a matter of fact, he just posted and told me that he's on. So I just saw on Facebook, and he definitely said that he is on. So, let's bring Dante in because Dante is one of the best activists I know here in the area. All right, we're going to bring him in in one second. Ladies and gentlemen, in Straight Talk with Dana Mar. Give us a call. Join the conversation 646 668 8393. This is Nikki Hall, founder of Simply Radiant LLC, a woman with great passion and skill to make you look and feel better. Meet me where you are. Let's take it to another level, a new you. See you soon. Call 919-971-6243. Make your place today. All right. And while we're at the... While we're at it, before we get to Dante, I do want to give Nikki a shout out and everything because Nikki is slowly heading into the uh, that five zero part of her life and everything. I believe this one is either forty seven or forty eight, but on uh, this past Saturday she did celebrate her birthday. Uh, I think she went up and hung out with a friend of hers up around Rocky Mountain, and of course she had family members because she is also a mother and a grandmother. So she was hanging out with some of her family members and definitely getting a lot of shout outs from people on Facebook and friends and acquaintances, but uh, definitely wanted her, since she is part of the Straight Talk family, to know that we wanted to give her a shout-out here as well. So definitely happy birthday to Nikki Hall, who is the uh, founder of that company Indeed. that does a lot of great work with makeup and everything, but uh, we definitely want to give her a uh, birthday shout-out. That's true. Happy birthday. Mr. Shabino. you are on Straight Talk with Dana Mark. Good evening, sir. Hey, Pete. Good evening. How y'all doing? All Doing right. good, Dante. Now, Dante is an activist in this area who has been an activist for a number of years. I'm not even sure when I first met Dante. I might have met Dante during Occupy, or it might have been during the Moral Monday uh, stuff. It had to have been way before Moral Monday because that's been fairly recent. So, Dante, when did we first meet? But I know that as long as I've known you, you have been an activist in our community, having done work with labor uh Unions having done work with the Fight for 15, having done work with teachers. So, I mean, you're definitely one of those people that is going to make sure that uh, society does not uh, look over the working class and things of that nature. So I know that you're definitely one of the young lions in our activist community that I greatly admire. So I, if you want to share when we first met, because I honestly cannot remember, but I know that I've known you now for a number of years, and you have actually also had a life-changing event as well. Because while you've been doing all this activist work, you also found your lady love 
and have also recently had a child. So you've had a lot of things happening in your life as well. I appreciate that.